Ladies and gentlemen, and those who identify otherwise, welcome to Teamwork and Collaboration Online, sponsored by the Virtual World International Student Project, Autumn 2022. In today's presentation, we will give models for teamwork and collaboration for those forming, participating in, and leading teams. Participants will be able to diagnose where their teams are working well or need work. The first part will be basics and professional tips. A team is two or more people working on a common objective. For example, look at the person sitting next to you right now and imagine I have just assigned the two of you to work together to learn something new today before the end of the presentation. You are a team of two. Team complexity is the number of possible person-to-person -person interactions within a team. For your two-person team, there is only one possible person-to-person -person interaction. Your team complexity is one. The more interactions that are possible, the more complex is the team. For example, look at the person sitting on the other side of you and imagine I just added them to your team. For your three-person team, there are now three ways to interact. Your team complexity is three. Now, let me just pause here and mention, you are in groups of six for your official team flag colors. How complex is a team of six? For six people, how many different ways could they talk to each other? <laughs> Bun Bunhead says 47. Thank you, Bunhead. <laughs> um, all right. All right. I will give you the formula. If you have a six-person team, there's six possible people that could be on the left, and that leaves five possible people on the right. So that's that would be 30 possible conversations, but that's double counted. So there's 15. So there's 15 possible ways for your six-people team to talk to each other. 15 is a lot. That is why there has to be a leader and an assistant leader to keep things down to smaller subgroups. So you need to keep your teams manageable. There are two types there are teams, one-time teams and recurring teams. For example, when this presentation is over, your three-person project is over as well. That was a one-time team. On the other hand, even when this presentation is over, the Virtual World International Student Project Autumn 2022 faculty team, John and Magua and Urson, Ginger, and others, will be sponsoring seven more shared class presentations. That is a recurring team. Teams that you sign up for are voluntary. Teams that you are assigned to are involuntary. For example, your UN goals for a sustainable world project is involuntary. The models that we will present today 
apply to all of those types of teams. Team operations model. From an analytical point of view, a team may be considered as a box with arrows. The arrows on the left represent the inputs of the team, such as your team members and their skills and time. The arrows on the right represent the outputs of the team, such as your project presentations and displays. The arrow on the top represents the controls on the team, such as assignments and constraints. In this course, your controls include the team briefing and project briefing, which are back at the arrival area where we began. The arrow on the bottom represents the supports of the team, such as the things that help get the job done. In this course, your supports are these shared classes and your extended faculty. My job here today with this presentation is to empower you to be a support arrow yourself. No matter what team you're on or what role you play on that team now, and in your future. Effective teams have effective members. Each of you bring an individual investment to the team box based on what you already know how to do and whether you are willing to do it. Together, these make up your net contribution to the team. Commitment is your level of dedication to the team objective. It is what you do. Competence is your level of proficiency in the role you play to achieve the team objective. It is what you know. This is a simple model, and it goes like this. High commitment times high competence equals high effectiveness. Low competence times low commitment equals low effectiveness. If either is medium, the effectiveness is medium. If either is zero, the effectiveness is zero. Most of the time, individuals achieve medium effectiveness due to constraints on their knowledge and time. However, anything above zero is a win. Professional tip. The question is, for each team you are on, what do you know how to do and are you willing to do it? Effective teams share roles. Your team brings a group investment to project success based on how well your members cover as many as nine team role skills. These include leading the team, generating ideas, investigating other efforts, detailed special knowledge, steady working and implementing, filling in the gaps, ruthlessly tracking down project versus goal, fine detailing, 
coordinating the team. Nine team roles. This is a simple model, and it goes like this. High coverage of the nine roles equals high success. Medium coverage of the nine roles equals medium success. Low coverage of the nine roles equals low success. Most of the time, groups achieve medium success due to one or more team roles, skills, not being covered by one of the team members going in. However, anything above zero is a win. Professional tip. The question is, for each team you are on, what roles don't you know yet? And are you willing to learn them? Effective teams use best practices. Best practices address how you and your group communicate. Brainstorming is an opening exercise where new ideas are generated. Deciding is a narrowing exercise where choices are made and action begins. Briefing is a narrowing exercise where agendas and ground rules are decided before an event begins. Debriefing is an opening exercise where members reflect on what happened at an event after it is over. This is a simple model and it goes like this. Either you talk to make things more open and expand the options, or you talk to make things more closed and narrow the options. The ability to expand options and the ability to narrow options are both needed. Throughout your project, your team will cycle back and forth between opening and closing communication modes. Both are essential to productive team operations. Professional tip. The question is, in the current conversation, are you in an opening or a closing mode? And is it time to switch? Effective teams develop in stages. Stages address how you and your team evolve through time. Forming is where you learn each other's names and how to get in touch with each other. Storming is where you argue with each other about how to do stuff. Norming is where you get used to each other and agree on a plan and detailed action steps. Performing is where you crank out results. Throughout a project, your team will cycle back and forth between these stages. For example, adapting to changes in skills, changes in circumstances, changes in team members, You will be adapting, improvising, and overcoming up to and even during your team presentation. Professional tip. The question is, for changes that arise, is it okay to proceed per plan? Or is it time to do something different? Effective teams evolve. Right now, you're in a team project called Virtual World International Team Project Autumn 2022. Even when this is over, you will certainly be in some other team project. 
In fact, you already are in other team projects, even now, with your family, your friends, and your other activities, and your work. Each time you participate in a team project, you have the opportunity to experience a growth cycle. You are listening to what is being asked of you this time. Choosing how to participate this time. Acting on your choices. Advancing based on your results. And extending your personal abilities to make things happen. Professional tip. The question is, what are you willing to learn how to do next? <laughs>